Hey guys, what's going on? So today we are going to be going into the three-star advent of the secret pub. It is currently half off stamina, so I thought it would be a good time to do this. We're going to start with our free summon here. Let's see what we get. Definitely a SSR. No doubt. Almost. The best thing you can reasonably expect, a four-star rare. Let's go ahead and move on. There's also the Esna Karen and Deimos raid up going on, and you get the guaranteed Esna on 10 summons, so that's definitely very interesting as well. I'm probably still not going to do it just because I have too many heroes to raise right now, but I know Esna is a pretty damn good uh, little dude there. That's not a dude. Anyway, let's check out this advent here. So we got the scary smiler that's half off. And the secret pub, which is the one we're doing today, which is also half off. You can only do it five times daily, unfortunately, but uh, hey, it's still pretty nice. 38 from 77. So I've only done this five times yesterday, and uh, I did fail once, so... But that was before I kind of learned what's going on. Now I think I have most of the mechanics down. We are actually going to be bringing all three of the SRs, Olive, Amulet, and Cordelia. Um, more than likely, if you've done a few pulls, you will have all of these. You just have to raise them. Mine are only level 50, so I didn't even get them above that. I didn't want to put resources into it just for an advent. Uh, but they do come along with some nice passive bonuses. And besides that, I have Ruby and uh, Ramu. Those are two SSRs, so potentially you don't have them. I'm not sure if they're totally necessary. Uh, you may just have to raise those three a little bit higher. Cordelia is pretty nice here, uh, which we'll get into in a second. I do prefer to take a friend, but there are no good ones like any wind types. So. Here we go. Let's just go ahead and give it a try. All right, so let's go ahead and go in here. And the first thing you'll notice Im immediately is two monkeys that copy themselves. So you should pay attention to where the copies are because you want to get rid of those first, actually, because all four of them can apply a very annoying debuff called Intoxication, and uh, you don't want that debuff. So since you can one-shot the, uh, the fake monkeys, go for them first, and then go for the real ones. The real ones can still intoxicate you, of course, but uh, since there are only two now, it's, it's less likely for you all to get intoxicated, so it's just better like that. So yeah, if you lose track of which monkeys are, are the real and fake ones, just know that on position 2 and 4 are the real ones. So any on 1, 3, or 5 will be the fake ones. This monkey actually did get silenced, I'll check who actually did that um, a little bit later. But that's also pretty good so they don't get that uh, intoxication debuff off. Yeah, this lady here, 60% chance to silence them for a turn, so uh, once you get rid of the fake ones or whenever, attack one of the real ones. If you're not unlucky like me, then maybe you'll silence one. Cordelia also has a bit of CC, of, again, a very low chance, and you need three of those searing stacks things, which I, which I don't think she has, so I, I just usually attack with her. I'm pretty sure I covered most of it, but as you can see, the monkeys do split off in different directions sometimes. We got the silence that time, pretty good. Let's go for the AoE attack here, maybe kill those two, nice. All right, so once you clean up the monkeys, uh, preferably, you know, only one or two would be intoxicated. Uh, if you're unlucky and no matter how well you do things, it could be all of them. And then you come to these weird eggplant looking dudes. Uh, of course, the most dangerous one here is the fire one. Uh, if he gets two turns, he will explode and do massive damage to everyone. Uh, usually these three, or at least those two, die. But if you're gonna bring Cordelia with you, uh, you can just use your second skill and mitigate this dude's damage. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if that's going to work for my Cordelia because she is currently intoxicated and she will be stunned next turn. If you're reasonably confident that you can kill the fire one before he explodes, then go for that. I don't think I can. So once the middle one attacks someone, he becomes huge and that is to note he's going to explode next turn. But sometimes he doesn't become huge, so he doesn't need to be huge to explode. Keep that in mind. Every time I've played this stage, when it comes to the fire eggplant second turn, he will explode and do massive damage to everyone. So I've decided not to even try and kill the fire one, I'm still going for this water one over here. When it would be Cordelia's turn next... Okay, what the f- It doesn't matter, those two weren't really needed anyway, neither is Cordelia, honestly. Um, they're just kind of here for their passive bonuses. The turn order is really weird, just, I guess, after this fire thing attacks, uh, get that shield from Cordelia up. We shouldn't need it yet because he hasn't even attacked yet. So this one's attacked now. It's going to explode the next chance it gets. Oh, is the turn order 
this way. Okay, it's going this way now. I'm usually playing like this and the turn order is completely different like that, so uh, uh, apologies. So it goes like this. So we got, well, according to the turn order, the, uh, the uh, fire eggplant attacks twice before Cordelia attacks once. So that's quite unfortunate, but uh, yeah. In this case, since you know you're not going to be able to mitigate it, I mean, you could try and kill it. I mean, we do have uh, we do have her left. We can give an attack boost and then also a little attack boost and maybe a really strong dude with uh, Ruby's normal attack. That's not going to work. I'm not sure if I should even waste the attack on him. Let's just go for this and take the hit. Boom. Get wrecked. So it goes Cordelia, Fire Dude, Fire Dude, and then Cordelia. So in my case specifically, I guess, I'm going to have to use the damage immunity to start off with. Hopefully these other eggplants don't don't take that off too much. There goes Rubies, there goes Cordelia's. And yeah, the trend for me is usually having those three die. So the boss can usually be soloed by just those two. Again, I don't bother reviving with Ramu unless Ruby dies. This time, just to try and show what it looks like to try and kill the fire one, we're going to do that this time. Uh, we're still going to start with the uh, little damage immunity there, because we do have uh, Ruby's third skill here. So we can take- oh my god, I didn't know. Well, if that was a crit, then I can't expect that all the time, since I don't build Ruby with crit. That was just uh, incredibly lucky. Uh, I cannot see if, I'm, if I have him targeted, but, but, but we're going to try and take care of him. Okay, it did work this time. I've tried it before and it didn't work, so I thought, eh, I'm just going to take the hit, because on Ruby and Ramu it's not too bad. It just kills the other three, which is kind of bad, but whatever. So if you do have a somewhat strong team, you, you definitely can kill him, I guess. And I would be lying if I said it's not cool to go into the boss battle with all five heroes. It definitely feels a lot more secure like that. But whatever, get through those eggplants however you can. Uh, and then you have this lady to deal with. I'm still not going to revive with Ramu because those two are useless anyway. I'm just going to attack. I also ignore the dudes she summons because she herself has about as much HP as the monkey. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use her second skill to give us damage immunity for a turn. It did definitely help there. That was a pretty strong attack. And of course, I don't know if, if I've actually targeted her because I can't see anything. Um, but uh, I'll assume I did. And we're going to go ahead and use Ruby's third skill to get some damage on there. Ruby's intoxicated now, unfortunately, which sucks, but uh, you can't really do anything about it. Ramu also, apparently. That's why she missed. We're going to go ahead and use Cordelia's third skill just because... She doesn't really have anything to do there anyway, and uh, yeah, again, pretty much ig ignoring those monkeys. That does a lot of damage, but I'm still not too worried about it. Um, if you get, if you get super unlucky and keep missing uh, while intoxicated, uh, then uh, it could, of course, our RNG could screw you over regardless. It doesn't matter how strong your heroes are, but uh, I think we'll be okay this time. Ramu has her level 60 passive, and I'm just saving her revive for when Ruby uh, does go down. If she does, she very well could. Um, so that's basically the uh, thought process there. Basically, these two could pretty much do it alone uh, if they had those passive buffs. We're going to go ahead and heal with Ramu to get that stun off. Got another crap on us again. And we're going to risk it with Ruby's third skill again. Um, thankfully, it did work. If it didn't, it wouldn't have been too bad. I probably had one or two more turns anyway, and, and she was already pretty low. But even so, once those three die, I mean, you still have the charm immunity, you still have the frozen immunity. I'm not sure if she freezes. I've always had the freeze immunity with me. Uh, the charm immunity, I know she charms a lot if you don't have that with her, and that can be extremely annoying. So I uh, definitely take that from now on. Cordelia used to be useful. Um, because she could actually defend that eggplant before it, it exploded, but I don't know. It's kind of weird with the turn counts here. Now she's not very useful, but she does give us 50% more attack, so it's it's still good, I guess. And yeah, usually her little minions will just die by like counter attacks and multi strikes and such, so again, I don't really bother with them. Besides that, I would consider it a waste of a turn. She does summon this guy, which is horrible. Like, this has happened, this is only the second time that's ever happened that, that she summoned one of those before she was dead. Um, it may not get a chance. Or, yeah, I think it does get a chance. Oh no, thank you, Ramu, for that uh, counter attack. So that was pretty lucky. I don't think we would have both died from it, but uh, would have been pretty close. Oh yeah, I didn't actually really talk about the boss mechanics at all until now. Um, 
it's pretty simple though. In the first half of her HP, there's nothing too special going on. If she counterattacks, she'll charm you, unless you have the charm immunity from one, one of these guys. I forget which one, but you can just go into party info to see that. And a little bit later, I believe actually right now, you can see from this buff up here, she has guaranteed counterattack. So that's why the charm immunity person is pretty important to have here or your, all your dudes are going to be getting charmed all the time. And then a little bit later, she gives herself an attack speed boost. As you can see from the turn count here, she goes literally half the time. So, I mean, there are five total dudes here on the field and she's going in between every single one of them. So that's where it gets pretty annoying. Um, that's where you probably want to save your big attacks like this for. So you can just eh, go away. You may have to raise a dedicated wind team if you don't have a super strong wind uh, attacker. Uh, I did give them um, some some little runes, you know, some plus six runes. They're still pretty useless to be honest at level 50, but you know, they at least do a little bit of something before they die. But yeah, I guess that'll pretty much do it for today's little guide. I'm not sure if it's really a guide, it's more of just like a walkthrough talking about what's going on there. Basically just so you can see before you go in there and spend your stamina to try it just to kind of get an idea. So hopefully you were able to see that at least. If so, cool beans. If you have your own strategies for this advent, then make sure to drop them down. Uh, leaving a like if you'd happen to enjoy would also be greatly appreciated. Thanks guys, as always, for watching, and until next time.